This is my second speed booster. The last one I had allows me to use EF lenses on the Canon M50. This time it's also for EF lenses, but for a different camera, a Micro Four Third camera, the Panasonic G7. If you want to ask me why I got a G7 in 2020, I'll explain it in a different video. This is the Filtrox EF M22 speed booster for Micro Four Third cameras to use EF lenses. Let's get started. There's one thing that no one really mentioned in their videos, and I want to talk about it first because it is very important if you are planning to get the speed booster. With the help of the Filtrox speed booster, you will be able to use Canon lenses on almost any Micro Four Third cameras, but you can only use lenses that come with an EF mount, not EFS mount. You might be thinking, of course, that's what it says on the box. An EFS mount has an extra part that sticks out so when you try to put an EFS mount onto the Filtrox Speed Booster, it will not fit because that extra part will hit the glass in the Speed Booster. Why do I know that? Because I tried it. But it doesn't mean that it will not fit any lenses that are made for APS-C Canon cameras. That's why it is super confusing. I have a Sigma 18-35 and a Tokina 11-60mm lens, and they are both made for cropped sensor cameras, but they have an EF mount, not an EFS mount. That's why they fit the speed booster. To keep it less confusing, the Filtrox speed booster will never fit lenses that are labeled as EFS lens, but it will fit any crop or full frame lenses that are labeled with an EF mount. You can have a crop lens with an EF mount. That's still pretty confusing but hope it helps. The reason why I got a little annoyed by this is because EF lenses are usually cheaper. And yes, I'm cheap. Now I can't use those lenses with the speed booster. That's too bad. The main reasons why you want to get a speed booster besides the ability to let you use other brand lenses is to get a wider viewing angle, to allow more light into your image, and to get a blurrier background. Let's talk about the first one, viewing angle. The Filtrox Speed Booster gives you a 0.71 times wider view. What that means is pretty simple. With a Micro Four Third camera, the viewing angle should be two times of what your lens is. If you put an 18mm lens on it, it will become 36mm compared to an actual 18mm on a full frame camera. With the Speed Booster, it will be two times 0.71, which is around 1.4 times compared to full frame. If you use an 18mm lens with this speed booster, it will be 18mm times 1.4, which is about 25 to 26mm. That is a lot wider than 36mm. Here's a sample to show you the difference. Another reason to get a speed booster is to get the extra light. The Filtrox speed booster will give you an extra stop of light using the same lens. If you attach a f1.8 lens onto the speed booster, it will become a f1.2 lens. With an extra stop of light, your image will be a lot brighter in a dark environment. To put things into perspective, you will be able to drop your ISO one level down to get less noise in your low light image. The reason why it is called a speed booster is because of the extra stop of light. To keep it simple, the extra stop of light or f-stop allows you to use a faster shutter speed to freeze the image. Faster shutter speed usually means sharper image. That's why the speed booster is making the lens faster. Now let's talk about getting blurrier background using a speed booster. The extra stop of light or f-stop means you can physically open the lens wider to let more light into the sensor. If you are keeping the subject and background at the same distance, you will get a blurrier background because now your f1.8 lens is f1.2. But before you get too excited to get the blurrier background or bokeh, even when you know you can take pictures or videos at f1.2, it doesn't mean you should always do it at f1.2. At f1.2, the focus area is so shallow that it might blur out things that you want to keep in focus. For example, if you are taking a portrait photo and the subject is not facing straight to the camera, one eye might be out of focus when the other one is in focus. Unless that's the look you are going for, you might want to stop it down to f2 or f2.8. 
Also, depends on the lens that you're using. If you open that extra aperture, it might become less sharp in general. Here's a sample of image sharpness with the Filtrox Speed Booster with the extra f-stop compared to the original f-stop. I will let you be the judge. The build quality of the Filtrox Speed Booster is solid. It is mainly made of metal, the only plastic part is the lens releasing switch. The lock is very solid as well. When you attach the speed booster under the camera, it has a very snug fit and it doesn't have any room or play. But it does have some wiggling room or play with the part that you attach the lens onto the speed booster. Autofocus also works very well but a little slower and less accurate mainly because it is trying to communicate with a different brand lens with a different mount. Continuous autofocus also works, but some other adapters will not allow you to do that. I think autofocus is generally very acceptable with this Filtrox Speed Booster. At around $200, it is not a cheap investment. But if you have a set of EF lenses like myself, and you want to be able to use the same lenses on different camera system, this is definitely worth it because you are gaining the extra stop of light and a much wider viewing angle. That's why I'm keeping mine. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the Filtrox 0.71 Micro Four Third to EF Speed Booster. Just like my previous video, I'm very happy with the purchase because this is a lot cheaper. I think about 50% cheaper than other Speed Booster brand. We hope this video can help you decide if you should get the Filtrox Speed Booster or not. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.